Today in our 2016 Chevrolet Traverse, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms, part number BX1706. Here's what this base plate kit is going to look like once it's installed on the vehicle. The most noticeable things you'll see are going to be these convenience links out front for the safety chains. This base plate kit's going to do a really good job of making sure that it's easy to hook your towed vehicle up to your motor home. So that way, when you're ready to go, you just hook it up and you're ready to roll. You don't need to spend a bunch of time tightening bolts and getting everything set and square, but rather you hook it up and you go. This kit has the removable arms, and in order to install these, you push them in, twist until they lock in place. And then that way, you can hook up your tow bar right here to the arm. And then whenever you're done, and ready to remove them for regular everyday driving, simply pull that pin, rotate the arm, and slide it back out and store it away until you're ready to use it again. Now with this kit, it does come with these little plugs to help keep dirt out of your mounting tabs. And that way it's always gonna be easy to slide that arm in and out when you need to use it. Let's show you how to install this base plate. First thing we'll need to do to begin the installation of our base plate is we'll need to remove this top plastic cover underneath the hood. There's going to be 10 push pin fasteners that we'll need to remove in order to do that. We can take a flathead screwdriver and get under the center of it and pop it up and then you can pull it right out of there. Now before we take this plastic off we'll need to remove the small little push pin clip that's on our weather stripping here. So you can just pry up on that in order to pop it out of there. And it's the same on both sides of this. Then we can remove our plastic cover and set it off to the side. Now we'll unscrew the top of our fascia. And there's seven of these T20 torque screws along the top edge here. We'll remove those. Got three here on the passenger side, and then four over on the driver's side. Then on both sides near the headlight, there will be a seven millimeter screw that we'll need to remove. Now we'll need to take out the three screws that are inside our wheel well here. So we'll start with a seven millimeter socket up at the top edge of the fascia where it meets the fender. And then the other two will be T20, just like the ones that were underneath the hood. We'll do that same thing on the other side. Now underneath, on both sides, we're gonna have two T20 torque screws and then a 10 millimeter bolt that we're gonna have to take out. Now we can begin to take the fascia off. In order to do that, you wanna grip up on the inside of the fender here and begin to pull outwards to begin to unclip it. And it should just begin to pop out as you work your way around towards the front. And then with an extra set of hands, you can begin to work it off and get it unclipped from the front of the vehicle. Then on both sides, if you've got fog lights, you'll have this connector that you'll need to remove. So you push down on the tab, then you can pull that connector right out. Then you can take the fascia and gently set it aside. Next thing we'll need to do is remove our washer fluid tank here. And in order to do that, we're going to need to disconnect the lines up higher so that it doesn't spill out everywhere as soon as we begin to take that out. So here are the two lines that come off of it, one for the front, one for the rear. I'm just going to take this little clip off here, and then right there, you can use a flathead screwdriver. Let's get it in there. You can pop those apart so that way you can have a little bit more room to work with these lines separately. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a small zip tie on one of them so I can identify which one's going to be going to the rear of the vehicle. It's going to be this one right here.
Then at this little connection here, on the two little ends where it comes out, you squeeze on, on the little tabs there, and that should pop right apart. And for the other one, got little clips there, which if you pry those two little tabs out, you'll be able to pull that one right apart as well. Now down here at the reservoir, we'll need to take off the connectors to each of our pumps, and then also the connector for our sensor. So get those disconnected, just tuck them up out of the way, and then using a 10 millimeter socket, there's going to be three nuts that are holding this on. With those off, we can carefully remove our washer tank. And wherever you set it, when you put it aside, you'll want to be sure to keep it upright so that it doesn't spill out. Now we'll need to take our horn off. Need a 10 millimeter socket for that. And to give myself plenty of room to work, I'm also going to take the connector off so I can set the horn aside. I'll make sure that connector is tucked up out of the way. And then I'll do the same thing for the horn on the other side. Now we need to remove our temp sensor that's mounted to the lower side of the front bumper. Just got a push pin fastener that holds that bracket up. We'll remove that, and our temp sensor will come right out. And then we'll take that and move it up out of the way while we put our base plate in. Now on the bracket here, I've gone ahead and marked out the area to be trimmed on each side. So I'll be cutting out this section here, and what that's going to allow me to do is to get flush along the bottom edge of that inside frame rail there. And then that's going to allow me to get on flush with the outside of the frame rail so that I can get the base plate to slide up into place. I'm going to use a reciprocating saw in order to begin cutting that out. If you don't have a reciprocating saw, you could also use a grinder with a cutting wheel or anything that might cut through this in order to help keep some clean lines. So now with our access trimmed out in order to get up to the sides of the frame rail, we can take our base plate and begin to slide it up into place. It's not a bad idea to take some jack stands in order to help support it. And that way it'll make it easier to make adjustments and help hold it in place once you get it in the correct location. With the base plate put on and positioned where it needs to be according to the instructions, I'll begin drilling out the pilot holes for these two bottom ones. Now I'll step up drill bit sizes until I've reached the size indicated in the instructions to be able to fit the bolts through. From this point on, anything that we do to one side for the installation of the base plate, we'll be doing that same thing to the other side. With the two bottom holes drilled out, we'll be installing these 3 8 inch, 1 inch long bolts. They're a little bit shorter ones that come in the kit. And when we install them, we'll be putting this red Loctite on them, and we'll be doing that for all the bolts that we'll be using to secure our base plate. If you need to get some of this red Loctite, you can get that on our site, part number LT. 37420. We can put our bolt through. And then on the inside, we'll put the split lock washer followed by a 3 8 nut. With the lower bolts installed on both sides, we can begin to tighten them up.
It'll be a 9 16 wrench and socket in order to do that. Now we can drill out our other holes in order to begin installing the bolts. Now we'll be putting these handle nuts up to the inside of the frame for our other bolt holes and we'll be using that access hole right there in order to feed them up into place. You'll need to bend the handle on these in order to get them to line up properly with the holes that you drilled in the side of the frame. And then when you get them lined up, the bolts that you'll be feeding into them will be the longer one and a half inch 3 8 bolts and you'll want to be sure to put the lock washer on there along with that Loctite on the end of it. Once you've got the nut lined up on the inside of the frame, take your bolt and begin to thread it in. With it threaded in, take a 9 16 socket and just tighten it down. And then the excess for the handle down here, you can either cut off using a grinder or a cutting bit on a Dremel tool or you can just bend it up out of the way. Then we'll repeat that same process for the other bolt and handle nut on this side. And then we'll go to the other side and do those two the same way. With all of our hardware tightened down, we want to be sure to go back and double check the torque and make sure it's torqued to the specification listed in the instructions. Now we can take our temp sensor and reinstall it. You can either put it back into its factory location or you can relocate it somewhere in the plastic that's nearby. But I can squeeze it back in here so I'm just going to reinstall it in its factory location. Now we'll take our safety cables that come in the kit and we'll route them around a section of the frame and it shows you a good way to do that in the instructions and then we'll bring them back to this connection point and connect them there using the quick link that they provide. At this point now if you've got a breakaway switch that you'll need to mount up for a supplemental braking system now's going to be a good time to do that and they do give you this bracket and a self-tapping screw in order to put it wherever you'd like here along the front of the bumper to make it easily accessible. I'm just going to put it right here using this self-tapping screw. I'm just going to center it right above where the wiring will come out. And I took the bracket here that's mounted to the breakaway switch and I bent it so it will match up to this so that it will come straight out. I'll get my nylon lock nut started there. Then I'll use a 7 16 socket and wrench in order to tighten up my breakaway switch. Now in those three studs that attached our windshield washer fluid tank to the outside of our frame rail there, now, in order to space it out properly, we'll put six flat washers that come with the kit and slide them on each stud. Now we can grab our reservoir tank and begin to put it up into place. Now we can reinstall the horns. Now we can test fit our fascia in order to 
see where we'll need to cut and trim. Now after test fitting it on there, I've marked an area, then I know I'm going to need to trim out, and then I can test fit it again and make any more adjustments or trim anything else needed in order to make it fit. Once you've got the fascia on, far enough on the vehicle that it'll stay, you can see where you'll need to trim out in order to get your tabs to come through. So I've marked it, and now I'll begin to trim that section out. Then I'll do the same thing for the other side. Now we can reinstall our fascia. And when you reinstall your fascia, don't forget to plug those electrical connections back in. We can reinstall our three screws into each fender. And underneath, we'll reinstall our four screws and two bolts in order to secure our paneling back in underneath here. Reinstall all the screws along the top of the fascia underneath the hood. That's going to complete our look at and installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms, part number BX1706 on our 2016 Chevrolet Traverse. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.